الحمد لله صلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending the salutations upon the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam and upon his family, his companions and upon all those who follow upon his guidance into the establishment of the last day to proceed ikhwan fa nawasilu ma'akum fi hadhihi al-laylati al-mubarakat al-karima a'unan min al-rahman al-rahim so we continue on this blessed and noble night of our second day eight in the assistance of our Lord, the most merciful and the most compassionate. Dhakira nafsi wa yakum, reminding ourselves firstly and our brothers and our sisters secondly. Qira'atan min kitabi imamina wa shaykhina al-allama al-faqih al-mufassir al-usooli. Shaykh Abi Abdullahi Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala. So we continue on this night benefiting from learning and studying together from the works or one of the works of the great Imam, the Allama, the Shaykh of Al-Fiqh and of, of Tafsir and of the Arabic language and of Al-Usul, the Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin rahimahullah ta'ala qira'atan min kitabihi al-majmu'ah reading from his book of Fatawa that has been entitled Al-Majmu'r. فَتَوَقَفْنَا عِنْدَ قَوْلِهِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى So we have stopped in the previous lesson where the Imam, he says, فَإِنْ قِيلَ كَيْفَ نَجْمَعُ بَيْنَ إِفْرَادِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِالْخَلْقِ مَعَ أَنَّ الْخَلْقَ قَدْ يُثْبِتُ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى as he says, if it's said, how can we collaborate or join together that Allah is singled out, that he is the off creator, and the fact that other than Allah, it has been established, that other than Allah can create. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى As Allah Ta'ala, he says, فَتَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ أَحْسَنُ الْخَالِقِينَ سُورَةُ Mu'minun. As Allah Ta'ala says about himself, and blessed be Allah, the best of those who create. The best of those who create. وَقَوْلُ النَّبِيَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ فِي الْمُصَوِّرِينَ And as the Messenger of Allah, he mentions the Ikhwan regarding those who take pictures of images or sculpt images or fashion things that have souls. فَقَوْلُ النَّبِيَ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ يُقَالُ لَهُمْ أَحْيُوْ مَا خَلَقُتُمْ مَا خَلَقُتُمْ As the Prophet said, it, it will be said to them, those who do this, bring to life that which you have created. Bring to life that which you have created. فَأَسَّأَلْ هُنَا يَخْوَان يَسْأَلُ الْإِمَامِ الْأُثَيْمِينَ مَثَلًا كَيْفَ نَجْمَعْ بَيْنَ مَاذَا قُلْتَ يَا شَكُ الْأُثَيْمِينَ وَمَاذَا قَالَ اللَّهُ وَقَالَ رَسُولِهِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وعلى عليه وسلم So the questioner is asking the Imam, he says, how can we join together what you have said, O Imam al uthaymin that Allah is singled out, that He is the Creator. When in fact Allah Himself has affirmed that other than Allah can create. And the Messenger ﷺ has ascertained and affirmed that other than Allah is going to be questioned. It's going to be said to them, Ah, you ma khalaqtum, bring to life what you have created. فَقَالَ الْإِمَامِ الْعُثَيْمِينَ فَالْجَوَابُ عَلَى ذَلِكَ أَنَّ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ لَا يَخْلُقُ كَخَلْقِ اللَّهِ Shaykh Udameen, he says, رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ In his reply, he says, So, other than Allah, when other than Allah creates, it is not a creation that is like when Allah creates. فَلَا يُمْكِنُهُ إِجَادُ مَعْدُومٍ أو إِجَادُ مَعْدُومٍ he says, other than Allah, it is not possible, it is not possible that other than Allah can bring something from nothingness into existence. This is impossible. Nor can other than Allah 
bring to life something that is dead. وَإِنَّمَا خَلَقَ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَكُونُ بِالتَّغْيِيرِ وَالتَّحْوِيلِ الشَّيْءِ مِنْ صِفَةٍ إِلَى صِفَةٍ أُخْرَى وَهُوَ مَخْلُوقٌ لِلَّهِ He says, but other than Allah, when it comes to other than Allah creating something, in reality, other than Allah, when they create, it is only changing the form of something. It is only altering the shape or the description of one thing, change in the description of this thing, making it another description. And this thing itself is from the creation that belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَضَرَبَّنَا لِأَنفُسِنَا أَمْسِ يَا إِخْوَانِ أو قَبْلَ أَمْسِ أَمْثِلَةً عَلَى هَذَا And we mentioned yesterday or before that some examples with regards to this. عندما النجار يخلق من الباب أو من الشجرة بابا and we mentioned that a carpenter, for example, he comes and he takes and fashions a door, creates a door from the tree. طيب فقال الإمام العثيمين رحمه الله تعالى فالمصور مثلا إذا صور صورة فإنه لم يحدث شيئا غاية ما هنالك أنه حول شيئا إلى شيء. شكو دمين says for example رحمه الله the one who takes or snaps a picture, or you can say the one who fashions or sculpts or he draws something that has an image. He says this person, for example, takes a picture or draws or sculpts a picture. He says in reality, he did not bring about something that didn't exist. But in reality, what this individual did was he altered something, he changed something from one thing to another thing. كما يحول الطين إلى صورة طير أو صورة جمل. He says like he changes the shape of a plane. He says and gives it the shape or the fashion of a bird. Or he takes from this thing, from the plane, from the clay or the likes, and he makes it, sculpts it into the image of a bird or the image of a camel. وكما يحول بالتلوين الرقعة البيضاء إلى صورة الملونة فالمداد من خلق الله. He says, or he takes something and he's using like a utensil and it's something that is white and clear and then he colors it or fashions it, giving it another image. But the utensils that are used themselves are from the creation of Allah. From the creation of Allah. والورقة البيضاء من خلق الله. He says, and the one who draws on a white canvas. He says, these utensils itself are from the creations of Allah. فَالْإِمَامُ يَخْوَانْهَا هُنَا يُبَيِّنُ أَنَّ إِذَا غَيْرَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَ يَخْلُقُ شَيْئًا فِي هَقِقَةِ الْأَمَرِ وَلَوْ يُقَالُ أَنَّهُ خَلَقَ مَا خَلَقَ خَلْقًا تَامًا لِأَنَّ هَذَا لِلَّهِ تَعَالَ So here the Imam is just giving examples that when it comes to other than Allah, when other than Allah creates something, in reality it's not the complete creation of something. They, not, they did not bring something from non-existence to being in existence. They did not bring something that was not there and now they created it, making it there. But this khalqun tamun, this cr complete creation is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. هذا هو الفرق بين إثبات الخلق بالنسبة إلى الله. and he says this is the distinction or the difference between affirming that Allah is the all creator or creation when it comes to Allah. وإثبات الخلق بالنسبة إلى المخلوق and the difference when it comes to the creation creating something. فالله تعالى يا إخوان له الخلق تام و للمخلوق الخلق بنسبة إلى المخلوق. So when it comes to Allah, Allah has the complete creation. Allah creates no one or nothing creates like Allah. Allah creates the cre the complete creation. He brings something from non-existence into existence. But when it comes to the creation of Allah, their creation that they may create, it is relative to the creation itself. They do not bring something from nothingness. But rather, huwa min tahwili shay ila shay. But when it comes to the creation of Allah, they are merely changing the shape 
of something, making it another shape, changing its components, giving it the description of another shape or form. قال الإمام العثيمين وعلى هذا يكون الله سبحانه وتعالى منفرد بالخلق الذي يختص به. So he said upon this we see how Allah is singled out when it comes to creation. That Allah is the off creator and this is a description that is يختص بالله that is specific and particular for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. قال الإمام العثيمين رحمه الله ثانيا secondly إفراد الله تعالى بالملك الله تعالى being singled out that he is the owner of the dominions or dominion of the heavens and the earth فلله, فلله تعالى وحده هو المالك كما قال تعالى so Allah himself and himself alone he is المالك he is the owner the possessor as he says about himself translators note this comes in Surah Al-Mulk. قال تعالى تبارك الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير. Allah Ta'ala says, Blessed is he, meaning Allah, the one that in his hand is a dominion. وهو على كل شيء قدير. And he, meaning Allah, that he has a power and strength over all things, to do all things. Surah al الملك. ففي هذه الآية بيّن الله سبحانه وتعالى يا إخوان أن الله سبحانه وتعالى أنه منفرد بالملك. So in this ayah, Allah clarifies for us that He is singled out, that He is the possessor of the dominion. تبارك الذي بيده هو أي بيد الله الملك إلى آخر هذه الآية. So as Allah says. Blessed is he, Allah, the one who what? That in his hands, or in his hand, rather, is the dominion. To the end of this ayah. To the end of this ayah. وَقَالَ Allah Ta'ala And as Allah Ta'ala says, as it comes in Surah Al-Nur, قَالَ تَعَالَ قُلْ مَنْ بِيَدِهِ مَلُكُوتُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ يُجِيرُ وَلَا يُجَارُ عَلَيْهِ he says, as Allah Ta'ala says, Say to them, O Muhammad, Who is the one that in his hand is the malikut of everything? The dominion of everything to the end of this ayah. Surah to An-Nur. قال الإمام العثيمين فالمالك ال... فال... طيب. قال فالمالك الملك المطلق العام الشامن هو الله. So what mean? He says, So the one who has absolute ownership that is general and comprehensive. Allahu Akbar. This is Allah Ta'ala. He and He alone. The mighty and the majestic. Wahdahu. Alone. Wa nisbatun mulki ila ghayrihi nisbatun idafiyyatun. Then He brings a tremendous point from the usul of this religion. He says, okay, so if Allah he is the owner the one who has absolute ownership of everything. He said, when it comes to other than Allah, this thing may also have ownership, but it's an ownership that is connected to something else. For example, Allah Ta'ala yamliku kulla shay. Lahu al-mulku al-tamu al-amu al-shamil. Lillahi Ta'ala. Allah has absolute ownership that is comprehensive, including everything. With no exceptions. Absolute. ولكن لي هذه قارورة ولي هذه حقيبة ولي هذه الإمامة ولي هذا الجاكيت ولي هذا الثوب ولي هذا التابلت ولي هذا القلم مثلا ولكن هذه الأشياء ليس لي شاملا لا لا يمكنني أن أتصرف بهذه الأشياء كما أريد لا الجواب لا so the person may say, for example, myself, this water bottle is mine. This bag is mine. This imama belongs to me. This jacket belongs to me. This stove belongs to me. My pen is my pen. So although it is mine, I can't do whatever I want to do with it. Some things I don't have the ability to do. 
and some things is not allowed in the legislation for me to do with it. فلله تعالى الملك شامل العام المطلق هو when it comes to Allah, Allah owns everything. فمثلا إذا أنا أعطيك هذه عقيبة الآن ليست لي أصبحت لك. So now Abd al-Hakim, this bag is my bag. So if I give you the bag, now it becomes yours. So it's no longer mine. So my ownership is not an absolute ownership. If you give it away, you sell it, it's no longer yours. But the affairs, all of them belong to Allah and will always belong to Allah. Allah has absolute, complete, comprehensive ownership of everything between the heavens and the earth. قال الإمام العثيمين رحمه الله إلى غيره نسبة إضافية فقد أثبت الله عز وجل لغيره الملك لغيره الملك He says but with regards to other than Allah although someone or something may possess something it is a possession that is connected to something else He says for indeed Allah has affirmed that other than Allah also can possess something كما ضربنا لنا هذه الأمثلة as we mentioned some examples قال الإمام العثيمين رحمه الله كما قال الله تعالى he says just as Allah has mentioned قال تعالى أو ما ملكت مفاتيحه سورة المؤمنون as Allah تعالى says or what your keys possess وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَ إِلَّا عَلَىٰ أَزْوَاجِهِمْ أَوْ مَا مَلَكَتْ أَيْمَانُهُمْ As Allah Ta'ala also says, and this comes in Surah Al-Mu'minun also, He says, or that which, or that which you have, from, that which, which you can do from your wives, or what your right hands possess, what your right hands possess, what you own, that is under your, your ownership. إِلَىٰ غَيْرِ ذَلِكِ مِنَ النَّصُوصِ الدَّالَةِ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ Malakan or Mulkan, he says, and other than these ayats that are clear proofs that point to that other than Allah can also own something or possess something. Hadhi Sayyara Li Watilka Laka. This car is mine. The other car is yours. Walakin ida abiruha laysat al an asbahat li. Alan asbahat liman yashtariyaha. But if I sell my car, it's no longer mine. The ownership that the creation possesses is not an absolute ownership. قال الإمام العثيمين لكن هذا الملك ليس كملك الله عز وجل. But the ownership that the creation possesses is not like the ownership that Allah Taala possesses. فهو ملك قاصر. He says, but rather it is a deficient ownership. وَمُلْكٌ مُقَيَّدٌ And it is an ownership that is restricted. وَمُلْكٌ قَاسِرٌ لَا يَشْمَلُ And it is a مَذَا It is an ownership that is deficient and it is not comprehensive. It does not conclude or include everything. فَالْبَيْتُ لَذِي لِزَيْدٍ لَا يَمْلِكُهُ عَامِرٌ عامر. So he says, for example, and perhaps his examples are going to be more honorable than mine, <laughs> He says, for example, the house that belongs to Zayd, no one owns this house. He says, the house that belongs to Zayd, Amir can't say he owns it. It's not his house. It's Zayd's house. وَالْبَيْتُ لَذِي لَعَامَرٍ لَا يَمْلِكُهُ زَيْدٌ And the house that Amir possesses, Zayd can't come and say, it's mine. It doesn't belong to Zayd. ثُمَّ هَذَا الْمُلْكُ مُقِيَّدٌ بحيث لا يتصرف الإنسان فيما ملك إلا على وجه الذي أذن الله سبحانه وتعالى فيه. He says, and the second thing, the ownership of the creation is restricted, meaning that the individual cannot come and just because he owns something, do whatever he wants to do with it because it's his. But rather, he's binded by the permission and the allowance of Allah. That Allah has legislated in this religion. وَلِهَذَا نَهَا النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ صَلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ عَنْ إِضَاعَةِ الْمَالِ He says, for this reason the Messenger of Allah has forbid, or forbade, that the person wastes 
his money. Mm. That the person wastes his money. نستفيد من هذه إخوان أن إضاءة المال حرام. We benefit from this that wasting money is haram. إذا للشخص مثلا سيارة ولا يكون محتاج إلى سيارة ثانية فلماذا يشتريها؟ وقال بعض العلماء لا يجوز له أن يشتريها لأن هذا تحت باب إضاعة المال إضاعة المال. For example, the young lady has a car and she's not in need. She has no Islamic need to buy another car. But she goes out and buys a car. Many of the scholars say she has no Islamic need. There's no need for her Islamically to purchase this second car, third car, fourth car. So here, it's not allowed for her to buy this car because it falls under the avenue of wasting and spending money. وَفَيْدَةً ثَانِيَةً Another benefit. إِضَاعَةُ الْوَقْتِ لَا يَجُوزِ Another benefit, not only wasting money is haram, wasting one's time is haram. فَعَلَيْنَا عَلَيْنَا عَلَيْنَا بِحِفْظِ الْأَوْقَاتِ So it's upon us to preserve our time. وَهَذَا لَا يَدُونَ يدو عَلَى لَا يَجُوزُ لِلشَّخْصِ أَنْ يَتَمَرَّنْ And this does not show it's haram for a person to work out, to exercise, to enjoy themselves. بِأَنْ يَلَعَبَ كُرَى to play sports from time to time. وَلَكِنْ إِضَاعَةُ الْوَقْتِ إِضَاعَةُ الْوَقْتِ لَا يَجُوزُ But wasting one's time. There's a difference here, Ikhwan. Wasting one's time is not allowed. وَإِذَا لَعَبْدُ مَثَلًا يَمْشِي إِلَى مَكَانِ رَفِعِ الْحَدِيدِ وَيَنْوِي فِي ذَلِكَ إِبَادَةً لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى فَهُوَ مَعْجُورٌ A tremendous benefit. If the man or woman, they go to the weight room, they go to the place to work out. It's a benefit for all of us who work out. My brother Abdul Hakim. So now he goes, she goes with the intention of this is worship for Allah. I'm strengthening my body, strengthening my mind for the sake of my Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, within the confines of the religion. Now this one is rewarded. Like if a person was to eat some food and he makes his intention before eating the food that he's eating to strengthen his body for worship. He's eating to strengthen his soul for worship. He's doing this not because he's hungry but with the intention of worship for Allah Ta'ala. This one is also mother rewarded. Likewise, if the person is asleep, he goes to sleep. He doesn't just sleep because he's tired. But the believer, يَنْوِي قَبْلَ أَنْ يَنَامْ إِبَادَةً لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَهُوَ مَعْجُورٌ وَهُوَ يَنَامْ عَلَى فَرَاشِهِ وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَلَى وَعَالَمْ So the person, before he sleeps, makes his intention to sleep, worship, out of worship to his Lord, seeking the face and the reward of his Lord. He makes an intention, I'm going to sleep, strengthening my body for the sake of my Lord. So I can get up and pray to Hajju. I can get up and fast. I can get up and worship. I will have some energy. So this one is rewarded while he's laying there, sleeping on his bed or the object or the thing that he uses to take his rest. Call Imam al نَهَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ عَنْ إِضَاعَةِ الْمَالِ He says, and Allah Ta'ala, طيب, and the Messenger of Allah has forbade the person from wasting his wealth. وَقَالَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى And Allah the Mighty and the Majestic, or the Blessed and Exalted rather, has said, قَالَ وَلَا تُؤْتُ السُّفَهَاءَ أَمْوَالَكُمْ أَلَّتِ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ قِيَامًا and he says, that Allah Ta'ala says, and do not give the foolish your wealth. That wealth that Allah Ta'ala has made for you, qiyaman. وَقَالْ الْإِمَامُ وَهَذَا الْدَلِيلٌ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّ مُلْكَ الْإِنسَانِ قَاسِرٌ أَنَّ مُلْكَ الْإِنسَانِ قَاسِرٌ وَمُلْكٌ مُقِيَّدٌ He says, and the likes of this shows that although mankind can possess something, can own something, the possession of this individual, 
the ownership of this individual is a deficient ownership. It is not inconclusive. It is not absolute. It does not include everything. And he says, and also it's restricted. بِخِلَافِ مُلْكِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى فَهُوَ مُلْكٌ عَامٌ شَامِلٌ وَمُلْكٌ مُطْلَقٌ يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى مَا يَشَاءُ وَلَا يُسْأَلُ عَمَّا يَفْعَلُ وَهُمْ يُسْأَلُونَ And then he says, رَحِمُهُمْ رَحِمُهَ اللَّهِ In opposition of the ownership of Allah, that which Allah possesses, he says, the ownership of Allah is a comprehensive, general, absolute ownership. And Allah Ta'ala can do whatever He wants to do in any way He wants to do it. And Allah is not questioned with regards to what Allah does, but rather the creation. They are the ones who are asked. نستفيد من هذه إخوان بالنسبة إلى الخالق والمخلوق when it comes to the Creator and the creation. Allah Ta'ala يفعل ما يريد الله تعالى can do and he does whatever he wishes فمثلا إذا, لا إذا الله تعالى يريد أن يغفر الكافر فيفعل كما يريد ويفعل ما يريد if Allah تعالى wishes to forgive a disbeliever and not cause this disbeliever to go to the fire من نحن لنسأل الله تعالى وهو الخالق هو خالق الكون كيف نسأل الخالق لا يمكننا أن نسأله أبدا so how can the creation ever ask the creator when he is the creator of the universe he is the creator of everything that we can see and we can't see so Allah تعالى can do whatever he wants to do ولكن الله تعالى لا يخالف الوعد but Allah does not contradict his promises. He does not oppose what he has mentioned. However, فَعَالٌ لِمَا يُرِيدٌ الْآيَةُ فِي سُورَةِ الْبُرُوجِ As Allah Ta'ala says about himself, Allah does whatever he wishes. وَكَمَا بَيَّنَ لَنَا الْأُثَيْمِينَ فَهُوَ لَا يُسْأَلُ وَالْجِنُّ وَالْإِنسُ يُسْأَلُ And as Imam Al-Uthaymeen mentions, the Creator, Allah, cannot be questioned. He's the Creator. But mankind and the jinn, we are the ones who are going to stand up and we are going to be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an anfusina wa an kulli wahidin tahta amrina and we're going to be questioned about ourselves and about everyone and everything that is under our care that is under our care طيب قال امام الثيمين رحمه الله تعالى ثالثا and perhaps we'll stop here, inshallah. Al Imam al Uthameen, he says, and thirdly, a tadbiru, when it comes to the arranger of affairs, Fallahu Azza wa Jalla munfaridun bit tadbiri, Fahu aladi yudabiru al khalqa. So he says, Allah is singled out again, that He is the one solely in Him alone who arranges the affairs of the universe. So He is the one who arranges the creation. وَيُدَبِّرُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ And he arranges the heavens and the affairs of the heavens and the earth and the affairs of the earth. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى As Allah Ta'ala says about himself, translate his note as it comes in Surah Al-A'raf. قَالَ أَلَا لَهُ الْخَلْقُ وَالْأَمْرُ تَبَارَكَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ As Allah Ta'ala says, And verily, surely, Belonging to him is the creation and the command. Tabarakallahu Rabbul Alameen. Blessed is Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. Nastafidu min hadhi al-aya. Idda tafawai. There are many benefits of this verse, ya khwa. Al-faydatu al-ula. Benefit number one. Ahamiyatu ta'alim al-lughat al-arabiyya. The virtues and the importance of of studying the Arabic language. لِأَنَّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فِي سِيغَةِ هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ ذَكَرَ شَيْئًا فِي خِلَافِ الْأَصْلِ لِأَمْرٍ مُهِمْ Because in the way Allah mentioned this verse, He contradicts or He opposes the general way that the Arab speak. And He does this for a particular reason. فَمَثَلًا إِذَا لَعَبْدُ يُحِبُّ زَوْجَتَهُ 
This is a benefit for you brothers and sisters studying Arabic. The man has a wife. And he loves her. Not a crazy love. Not a dunya we love. But rather he loves her with the Islamic love. So she says to him, Do you love me? So he says, Yes, I love you. So him saying this in this phrase, I love you, does not oppose or contradict the fact that perhaps he loves someone else. I love you. Does not mean I don't love her too. Or this one or that one. <laughs> but in the Arabic language, there's a way where you can show al-hasr. Where you can show restriction. And it's from usul al-fiqh. وَمِنْ أُصُولِ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ And from the fundamentals of the Arabic language, وَهُوَ تَأْخِيرُ مَا تَأْخِيرُ مَا حَقُهُ تَقْدِيمُ مَا حَقُهُ تَأْخِيرُ And this principle is something that usually is mentioned first, you mention it last. Shows restriction. تَقْدِيمُ مَا حَقُهُ تَأْخِيرُ يُفِيدُ الْحَصْرُ And this principle once again is the thing that usually is mentioned first, you delay it and mention it last. So now instead of saying, I love you, you flip it around. And you say, you I love. You don't hear it in English a lot. <laughs> it's real eloquent to do, ya khwan, Especially in the Arabic language. Instead of saying, I love you. Now we're going to say, you I love. Meaning, you are the only one I love. Allah does this same principle or the same point with the same reason in Surah Al-Fatiha. In order to show restriction. Allah Ta'ala says, you alone, O Allah, we worship and you alone, we seek assistance. وَلَكِنْ هَذِهِ سِيغَةٌ أو هَذِهِ سِيَاقٌ لَيْسَ مِنْ أَصْلِ أو لَيْسَ مِنْ الْأَصْلِ الْعَامِ مِنْ نُغَةِ الْعَرَبِيَّةِ وَلَكِنْ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَعَلَهُ لِأَمْرٍ مُهِمٍ But the way Allah says it here is the same example we're mentioning. He's opposing the general way the Arabs speak. The general way the Arabs speak, Allah is opposing this for a particular reason, to show restriction. And your translation of Al-Fatiha it should say, you alone. And the alone may be in parentheses, or in the footnote, or in the hashia, or in the margins. But it shouldn't say, you we worship. That's a mistake. That's not what Allah said. That also shows the virtues of the Arabic language. Iyaka na'abudu. The origin is na'abuduka. The origin is, we worship you. وَلَكِنْ إِذَا لَعَبْدُ يَقُولْ أَنَّهُ يَعْبُدُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَا يَدُلْ عَلَى أَنَّهُ لَا يَعْبُدُ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ so if a person says, he worships Allah, and stops there, there's not no point there that shows that he only worships Allah. He may worship Allah and other than Allah. So in this verse here, Allah changes the structure of the verse, and the way the Arabs usually speak is, na'abuduka. We worship you, O Allah. But that's not the intent. Allah wants to show, and He intended to show, and He has shown restriction. So he says, Iyaka na'abudu. He flipped it around. Go back to the principle. The thing that is mentioned first, you mention it last, shows restriction. I love you. Flip it around. You I love. Meaning, you are the only one I love. We worship you. Flip it around. You we worship. Meaning, you are the only one we worship. So this shows restriction. And the likes of all of this, like this verse here in Surah Al-Araf, shows the virtues of the Arabic language. قال تعالى ألا له الخلق والأمر الآن نفس الفائدة نفس الفائدة يفيد الحصر لأنه قدم ما يكون في آخر الآية أو في آخر الجملة ليفيد الحصر. So here once again, Allah put forth first the thing that usually is put forth last. So it's the origin of it 
is and the creation and the command belong to him. But that doesn't show restriction. So Allah changes the structure and he says, to him belong the creation. That's different than the creation belongs to him. This bag belongs to me. To me the bag belongs. Even in English it's kind of eloquent. <laughs> but especially in Arabic. I pray in the masjid. In the masjid, I pray. It's so restriction. If you say, I pray in the masjid, doesn't mean you only pray in the masjid. Maybe you pray at work, at home, in the masjid. If you say, in the masjid, I pray, means there's nowhere else that I pray. So it shows restriction. You, I love, means there's no one I love like you. The brothers that have two and three wives, they have to be careful here. The wife says, hey, do you love me? Yes, I love you. She still may get mad at you. Why? I said I love you. What's the problem? Yes, but you didn't restrict it. So you love her also. So now he's going to have an issue. All of this shows the virtues of the Arabic language. He says, so this arranging of the affairs when it comes to Allah is comprehensive and absolute. And nothing comes between this. And there's no opposition to that. And we'll stop here, inshallah. He says, so the arranging of the affairs that comes with some of the creation of Allah is like the arranging of an individual when he arranges his property and his wealth or his family, his children or those who are under his care and the likes of this. His arranging of affairs is restricted and is, it has a limit set over it, has boundaries and is not, and is restricted and it is not absolute. You can arrange what's under you by the permission of Allah. You can do whatever you want with your children. You're guided and you're in the confines of the legislation of Allah. And you arranging your children does not give you the right to arrange the affairs of the children of someone else. So your arranging is not shamilan, mutlaqan. It is not absolute and comprehensive. And he says thus, this is the truth, the statement, the truthfulness of the correctness of our statement when he says that the oneness of Allah's Lordship is that Allah is singled out in three things. He's singled out in creation. He's singled out in the his ownership and he's singled out in the arranging of affairs. Wana tawakafuna inshallah and the anur thani tawhidi al uluhiya. And we'll stop here with the second category, which is the oneness of Allah's worship. Inshallah ta'ala. Fana sabtu famin Allah. Wan akhtatuf min nafsi. Anything we said that's correct is from Allah. Wa anything we said is incorrect is from ourselves. Wa jazakum Allahu khayran. Subhanaka lahum wa bihamdika. أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله